good morning good afternoon good evening whatever time you're watching the video today I'm just going to clean Woody out his muse have a little catch up if you've been watching the channel you know that uh, Woody's in malt so he's just about finished malt now I think he's got maybe part of the train still on the way down but it's almost down I'm going to go in the muse in a minute and take a bit of film of him have a look at his uh, new set of feathers for season 2023-2024 so I got Woody four years ago probably today which is the 19th of August so I'm a little still a little bit early to um, reduce his weight there's not really any point in getting him ready for flying although I'm itching to get him out so I think I'm gonna get him out a little bit early um, but what I don't want to do is get him out and not get him catching. I want to get him out and then get him catching quite quick, which is difficult because there's a lot of um, growth all over at the moment. I think we're going to have a great season. We've got the new dog, Bo. This is going to be his first complete season. We've got Chewy, that you, I'm sure you all know quite well if you've been watching the channel. Flashing dog, works very well with the hawk. And then we've got the dear old Woody the Harris Hawk. This morning I've been in his muse and just took out these pieces of uh, astroturf which are probably not the best thing but I soon get them cleaned off. A bit of water, let, let the water soak into um, Woody's slices or mutes, whatever you want to call them. The beauty of my setup is I've got a 4x8 shed and a 4x8 aviary and between the aviary and the mews is a little trapdoor so I can shut the trapdoor and keep him in either the aviary or the mews depending which side I'm in. So Woody has uh, got this view all year round, he's got a very big um, Avery opening and he often sits on this nice bit of astral turf just there or at the other end he chooses to go on the astral turf rather than the just the plain wood and he looks out at the fish and whatever's going on in the garden at the time we could be over there having a barbecue family round but Woody all the time just watches what we're up to He's not in a seclusion. So the dog has found himself a little bit of rabbit bone, which has come off the aviary floor whilst I'm cleaning out. And he's crunching that up. Is that nice bone? So we've got a security door. And then we come into the aviary. So I can shut this security door. It's just a little, uh, it's not a very big area but it's enough to secure before you go into the main mews so I've still got a little bit more astral turf to take down they're just sheets from B&Q and uh, I lay a bit out I would prefer to have stone on the floor but this shed which it was has a wooden floor so I'll just do that and it works but I'm gonna have a nice sweep out there in a minute and there is Woody in his aviary quite calm in the winter he sleeps up there and in the summer he's always on this part here which is why there's slices on that back um, piece of astroturf there the other piece goes here and then the other two sheets lay on the floor. I'm going to give this a sweep out in a minute. I always wear this, or a dust mask, when I'm in cleaning the aviary out. I think it's a good thing to do, even if I'm jet washing, because uh, you don't know what sort of particles are in the aviary or in the mutes and slices, so it's best to keep self protective when you're doing this. And these are left over from COVID, so I've got a few of them. Got a little bit of sandpaper on this edge where he goes out into the aviary, a little bit there, 
and often if he's eating in the aviary, he'll come out, he'll sit on this piece of astroturf, which is not the right stuff, but he don't spend long on there. Clean his beak, gives him a little bit of cope, coping his beak. And also this little shelf here, the sun comes in and he will lay on that. I might have a little bit of footage of him laying on that and if I can find it, I'll put it on. And there's the inside of the chute if I feed him from the chute or if someone's looking after him while I've been away his food comes through there drops down onto the astroturf which is not there at the moment so that was an 8x4 shed converted and there he is in his aviary outside so he's got quite a nice area to be and he can decide whether to go in the aviary or in the muse, depending what he wants. He's often out there and he sleeps out there in the summer on his perch and uh, comes in to feed. If he wants to come in for any reason, he'll come in. So I have just been away for a few days camping. And while I was up there, I found this little bit of wood. And it reminded me of a sort of dog's head, so. I like things like that and brought that home and that stayed by the side of the pond. We also um, went looking for adders, although I didn't see any adders. I found a few nice mushrooms, toadstools and fungi, which um, is in previous videos. You know I like that sort of thing because I'm, uh, I'm always taking photos of mushrooms and fungi. Woody has seen me preparing some food, even though I try and do it secretly. He knows exactly what I'm doing. He watches me like a hawk. Don't you, Woody? Hey, there's Bo there. There's your mate. So there we are, all back together. All nice and clean, Muse out. Just gonna disinfect it now. All the perch areas and I'll spray a little bit on the I kept calling it astroturf but it's not this is uh, just artificial grass this is astroturf And all through that, Woody's just been sitting out there, chilled out, watching what's going on. He's been in here a few times when I've left the area, just to see if I've left any food. But he's not troubled. And I think that's because uh, the one there, pretty good anyway, house hawks, but he's got this big viewing area. And although he's not manned, he's not frightened of man and certainly not me, because he knows that I feed him. So what is all cleaned out, I'm going to go in there now and offer him a piece of chicken 
a day old cockerel, which is his favourite. If he doesn't come over for that, he's not going to come over for anything. I know he's not going to come over, but I'm going to see what he's like. I haven't been in there and done this for weeks now. Now there's Woody in there. If you can see him, I'm going to show him this chick now. So as you see, he comes over to the bars. He will take this out my hand now, no trouble, but he would have my fingers and all, so I'm not going to do that. But I'm just seeing if he's keen. See him looking. He's not going to come over and take it out of my hand. I know he isn't. But he's looking. What I'm going to do is just put it there for him. And stay here and see if he'll come in and take it. With me standing here. Which I'm pretty sure he will. He knows my whistle. He knows that means food. What I'm going to do is give him a little taster, a bit closer. And then once he's had that, oh, I think he'll come, come over. So there, there's a hawk that I haven't interacted with for quite a while. He's, he's not totally happy with me here, which is completely strange when you think I was hunting him seven days a week last season. But once you get your hawk um, doing something daily, whatever you're doing, he's going to come over now. He's not scared of me. So once you get your hawk back down to a weight where they will come over, and it doesn't have to take much if you if you've got a hawk like this that's already coming over, it's just not getting on my fist. And I think that's just because of the closeness we've had through the last few seasons. Um, it's not going to take too much to get him out flying. If you subscribe and hit the notification bell, not long now, a couple of weeks, I'm going to be reducing the food very slightly, just enough for him to come around and hop onto my fist. Before I do that, for my own interest, I'm going to come in here at dark, when it is dark at night, pick Woody up, pop a hood on, and I'm going to weigh him. And I'm going to take the hood off the weight. So he's come in now to see if there's any more over here. But there is a Harris Hawk that is at fat weight. You see cleaning his beak there on that sandpaper. His beak will need coping. It's not really done as much as I would hope it to do. Because he's showing quite a bit of interest now. I'm going to go and get him a bit more food and see if he'll uh, come a little bit closer. But as I say, I'm going to weigh Woody. Just so I know what his fat weight was, just for interest. And then I know what the weight is I'm bringing him down to and what uh, and how much I have to bring him down compared to his fat weight because they're all different. But I think Woody is quite a quite a large hawk for our Harris hawk because you know I have been flying him at up to I will say up to one pound eleven. Not that he was um, fantastic at that weight. But he was, um, you know, follow, he was following on. But he would go a bit wayward, so that's not a good idea flying them at high weights like that. That was quite heavy. And the aim is to fly him through the season. And when he goes into molt at the end of February, he will be as in good condition as, as he is now. As you can see there, his beak very overgrown during the molt I'll need to coat that back sort him out a bit but uh, other than that he's looking fine I've got to make him some new anklets and another set of flying jesses 
So I've got a little bit of red meat for him now. It's not so much of a favourite as the day old cockerels, but I'll put it on the side here. Let him have a good old feast. I'm going to stand a little closer to it, maybe put my hand on the um, perch. See what he does. You can see I'm not far away from it now. It's coming over a little gingerly. And it looks like um, the train, there's a couple of train feathers just reaching the bottom, so we're not far away now. I'm going to bring him down, I reckon, in the next two weeks. Hope to have him out by September flying. It's a perfect opportunity now to have a little look at what he's train and you'll see that his train is almost all renewed he's got one there coming down just got an inch or two to go but it's all looking really good and complete and whilst he's eating like that in a couple of weeks is probably when I'm going to be putting on um, I'll be putting on his towel clip which is telemetry whilst he's eating I may cast him up I need to cut that beak so I may cast him up but I'll probably put his towel clip on whilst he's mantling like that if he's well behaved enough but as you can see that train is almost complete. And each molt wood he's had, he's always molted 13 feathers out the train. Although there's only 12, he's done the same this year. So he's had a complete set of new feathers and then dropped one of the new ones as well. I'm not sure if that's where I've been giving him fairly rich food, I don't know, but he certainly moulded well. And um, as I say, 13 instead of 12. So it sort of delayed us a little bit because um, it was all down and then, then uh, he decided to moult another feather. Of course, all our salts are going to be different their nature, their mentality and I'm just showing you what I do with my hawk and we have success he catches all his own food he catches enough food to get him right through the mould plus but as I say we're out every day when we're hunting but we only ever do one kill he's not multiple kills he catches one item a day and that's it or one item when he catches we don't catch multiple on each day I don't count the catch all I'm doing is making sure he's well fed well looked after and we got enough to last us through the mold and I think I've got um, enough to give the dog a bit of food as well so what he done really well last season so thanks for watching I know there's not a lot going on at the moment with the hawk in malt, but um, we're getting there. And as I say, if you subscribe and hit the notification bell, you will see us getting Woody back in the air, back hunting, and follow us through our journey of 2023-2024.